welcome everyone back to our Psychology of Gender course. Great to see you all again today. Um, this is our second course of the semester. Nice to see some new faces of people who weren't here last week. And let's get started. So as you can see from this um, intro slide, um, today we're going to be talking about norms and differences. And there are a few specific objectives that we're going to be focused on today. Um, the first one, as you can see, is to be able to describe the differences between the terms gender and sex. Um, those are terms that I'm guessing everyone is familiar with. You've probably heard them a lot, <clears throat> but they do often get um, mixed up and used interchangeably. So we're going to really try to um, tease those out. The second objective for today's course is to discuss and more deeply understand real versus mythical gender differences. Um, so there's some gender differences out there that have been researched, that have been found to be, be true and um, empirically proven through science, and then there are ones that are commonly misconceived um, and aren't actually true. And then the third objective, which we might not have time for if we don't have time for it today, um, we'll definitely get to it next class, is to identify several learning mechanisms through which children and adults are taught the importance of gender differences. So really trying to start to understand more for all of us, um, where do we learn some of these things about what it means to be male versus female um, in society? So starting off, um, thinking about these words, gender and sex, what comes up for people? What, um, what are some ideas you have about what, what these words mean? Maybe starting with gender. Any ideas? Yeah, Billy. Uh, like biology? So gender is actually not biology, but that is a common misconception. And a lot of people think that gender does mean biology. So let's pull up um, what we mean when we talk about gender. So gender is specifically cognitive and, cognitive and social differences between males and females. So it has to do with um, thoughts and social practices ways of thinking about things um, that distinguish males from females. And then how about sex? Any guesses? So if that's gender, if gender has to do with cognitive and social differences, what might sex mean? Yeah, Mary. Oh, it's like, you know, when you say males and females, that's our, that's our biological sex. You got it. Um, <clears throat> great description there. So when we talk about sex, that's when we're getting into the biological stuff. So sex organs, physiology, um, and physical differences that separate um, males from females. So any questions? Does that make sense to people? OK, great. And then we get into some terms, and we have some very specific terms that often get used when we're thinking about um, gender and gender behaviors in society. And you know, probably the most common ones are female, feminine, and male, masculine. Um, and you know, female and male are the categories that we use, and feminine and masculine are the words that we use to describe behaviors and practices for those genders. So. What comes to mind when we use the word female? What do people think? What, is, what does that mean, to be female in society? Yeah, Lauren. Beautiful. OK, so beauty, so kind of like looks. Yep. So appearance and looks. So we'll put appearance. What else? And just shout them out, and I'll write them down on the board. Wearing skirts and dresses. Uh huh. Skirts and dresses. Clothing. Body image. Okay, body image. Okay, why don't we put up males too, just to see what comes to mind for that term. Males or masculine. What does that mean? Bros. Bros. Can you say more about that, Bruno? Well, you know, when 
there's this sort of like ideal of what uber super masculine guys are, and it's sort of a stereotype. Okay, so what would be some bro characteristics? What, like, what do bros do? What are bros like? Well, they, you know, kind of hang out in a big group, and maybe they're in a frat or like in a sport together, mm -hmm. and it's very different than what the female version of that might be. Uh huh. Frat, sports. Um, how about when we think about things like emotions? Are emotions treated similarly for males versus females? No. What are, what are some of the differences? Um, men are told to control their emotions. But yeah, we often hear, what's the common phrase that's out there? Boys don't cry, right? Isn't that a common thing that gets said? So boys and men are told to control emotions. Great. And is it the same for females? No. How's it for females, John? Well, it's all right. Girls can, girls can cry. So girls have more flexibility to cry. Yeah. Um, what about things like physical strength? Is physical strength treated similarly for, for guys and girls? No. How's it different? Any well, ideas? girls are sort of usually weaker. Mm -hmm. Okay, so girls Seen are as weaker. Is weaker. So guys would have to be stronger. Mm -hmm. um, so these are just a few words that we've used to describe these two terms. Um, and there are lots of different ways to describe males and females. And one you know, question that I'll be asking you all to think about as we you know, are exploring these terms and these different ideas and social processes more is where you fit for yourself with some of these binary categories. Um, because what we found in researching these categories is that no one ever meets all of the ideals, whether it's for a guy with the expectation to be strong, tough, not show emotions, um, powerful, breadwinner, you know, the list goes on and on, you know, or female norms um, seen as being more emotionally sensitive, more emotionally vulnerable, um, better caretaker of children, more, more emotionally in tune, able to cry more easily, um, interested in totally different things, not interested in sports, um, other stuff. Are these gender binaries real? And where do you fit in kind of with these terms that, that society uses? And that can often be very oppositional. And then we have other terms too. So it's you know very traditional to look at male, feminine. Those are the two kind of classical gender binaries. But um, there are other categories, and it's important to to be aware of those and to realize that you know these things that often get framed in very fixed ways. Um, you know there are lots of different ways of being a person. Um, so by transgender, that term specifically means um, someone has a gender identity that is different from um, their sex that they were born with. And queer um, is a term that sometimes gets used for individuals who actively do not want to identify with more common notions of heteronormative, heterosexual, gendered ways of being and want to be able to kind of have more of a free expression of that. So. Okay, so moving on, when we're thinking about gender differences, um, there are lots of myth out, myths out, out there, there are lots of real gender differences. Um, so what are some of the real ones? So these are things that research has actually found with girls that are actual gender differences. Girls are physically and neurologically more advanced at birth, they have superior verbal abilities, and they're more compliant in nurturing. Uh, boys 
uh, cry and are more emotional as young babies. Um, they excel in visual spatial skills and geometry. And uh, they have more genetic defects, physical disabilities, mental retardation, reading disabilities, speech defects, um, and school and emotional problems. So those are some differences that have been found um, to actually exist between males and females. And then how about, what are some mythical ones? Um, so there are lots of myths out there that girls are more social, that you know, girls are more in need of love and affection, um, that maybe there are differences in self-esteem. And in actuality, boys and girls are equally social. Social, they're both equally in need of love and attachment, similar in self-esteem. Um, and they're both equally active. So, you know, boys are not more active than girls, even though there's this myth out there that they are. Okay, so in these final few um, moments and minutes, um, before we wrap up today's lecture, I want everyone to think about, for you, whether you identify as male, female, whether you have a different identification than that, how have you learned kind of what, what it means to be male, female, or, you know, some other form of identity. Um, how have you gotten to where you are today with your, your gender identity? Yeah, Mark. Well, I identify as male, and that's just how my parents raised me. So, okay. you know, everything was blue, and everything was pink for my sister. Okay. So it sounds like for you, you're able to really identify your parents as an influence in yeah. teaching you what it means to be a, a guy in society. Yeah, okay. guess so. Yeah. How about for you, Rebecca? Well, I identify as queer, so even though my parents raised me as female, um, as I got older, I realized that maybe there were some other issues and maybe, you know, society was sort of constricting the way that I felt. Mm -hmm. Cool. And do you, have you had any influences along the way that have helped you with that expression and developing that identity? Well, I think probably going to college and learning about different options mm -hmm. with gender. Yep, yeah, great. Um, so here are a few of, of some of the more common um, learning influencers. Um, that we'll be talking a lot more about throughout the course of the semester. So, names. Um, think about the names that we use, and we could go into lots of examples, but boys and girls often have very clearly demarcated names that identify them as male or female. Um, colors, which you identified. Toys. We've got toys in society that are meant for boys, and then, you know, got the girl down here in the pink room, meant for girls. Um, haircuts, video games, I mean the list goes on and on of different things in society that both signify kind of male and female appropriate activities or behaviors and then help us learn what is expected of us. Um, so we're going to wrap up today, um, but we'll be discussing this a lot more in detail next week. Um, sorry that we didn't have more time everyone, but really great contributions and I'll be staying around afterwards if there are any questions. Good to see you all. Thank <laughs> you.